are listening to the Real Life Church Podcast. To learn more about Real Life Church, including our gathering times in Yuma, Arizona, visit us online at reallifeyuma.com. Today's talk comes from Pastor Bob Van Horn. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Real Life Church. I'm Pastor Bob, and I'm really glad you're with us today. We're going to continue in our series looking at the incredible life of Paul. We're looking at essential qualities that he had in his life that we, if we put them into practice in our life, it would draw us into a closer relationship with God and with one another. We've looked at the essential qualities of surrender, joy, grit, boldness, and last week we looked at leadership. Today, we're going to look at the quality that allowed Paul to live a blessed life life. Not only a blessed life, but he was a blessing to other people. The essential quality we're going to look at today is the topic of generosity. Matter of fact, you could start off this morning by being generous. You could be generous right now by sharing this message with the people that are in your friends list. Go ahead. Be generous right now. One of the clearest examples we get of Paul being generous was the heart that he had for the church in Jerusalem. It was a couple of decades after the resurrection of Christ that the church in Jerusalem had really taken off. The church, it grew larger, and that was a good thing. It became a bigger threat to the people and the society in which it was in. It was a threat to the religious leaders. It was a threat to the Roman government. And the church came under great persecution. Soon, Christians were being beaten. They were being arrested. And they were being executed. Some Christians were being kicked out of their families. They were being kicked out of Jewish society. They lost their jobs. They lost everything. And overnight, they became pretty poor. And the church in Jerusalem very quickly became poor and persecuted. The Apostle Paul, he's out on mission trips. He's out in Asia Minor starting new churches, establishing new networks, everything. And Paul's life is going great. He's bringing the gospel to the Gentiles. And yet he hears about the church in Jerusalem. And Paul decided to do something about it. So he writes back to many of the churches that he started, and he tells them, we're going to take up an offering. The people that Paul is ministering to really have no connection with this church in Jerusalem. They don't have any connection with the people that are in Jerusalem. But because Paul says that we ought to help this church, the people were going to take up this generous offering and send it back to this church whom they had no dealings with. Paul lived a very generous life, and he led others to be generous at the same time. I want you to examine yourself. Would you describe yourself as a generous person? Are you a blessing to other people by the things that God has given you? When we're generous, it grows our faith. It helps stretch us to realize that our generosity is about blessing other people and not keeping it for ourselves. We're going to start off in 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Paul writes this little phrase here, and I want to read it to you. He says, since you excel in so many ways in your faith, you're excelling in all different types of areas. You're gifted speakers. You have great knowledge, Paul says. You're enthusiastic. You love. And all that's important. And then he kind of challenges them. And I want to challenge you this morning. And he says, I want you to excel also in this gracious act of giving. So why is it important for you and I to be generous? And have this quality of being generous. I think of a couple different things. First of all, when we're talking about being generous, we're talking about, well, money. 
And I know right away when we start to talk about money, some people, maybe not you, but some people, they tighten up. Because they think that's what church is all about. They're asking for money, they want money, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I'm not doing that. What I'm talking about is the principle behind being generous. And when we're generous, we show God and we show other people that God is in control of every aspect of my life. See, a lot of times we want to hang on to our money. You work hard for it. Actually, all of our money belongs to God, and we're supposed to be good managers of whatever he's blessed us with. And whatever he's blessed you with, a lot or little, he expects us to be generous and bless other people with it. When we're generous, it grows our faith. God is a generous God. Matter of fact, we know the verses that God gave us his son. If we're going to be followers of Jesus, then we have to learn to be just as generous, not just with money, but with every aspect of our life. So let's look at some of the things that Paul writes about in a lot of his different letters on how to work towards being generous. Now, let me say this. I already know that I'm talking to some of you who are very generous, and this is just a gentle reminder. I'm also talking to some people who struggle with this whole idea of giving God anything. I get it. So I'm going to start from the beginning. I'm going to assume that everyone that's listening to me right now is a brand new, well, giver or someone who's thinking about being generous. And we're going to work all the way up to, well, what Paul describes as a sacrificial giver. So if you've not ever made the commitment to give, to God, a portion of what he has blessed you with. That's the very first step. I would encourage you to give some identifiable gift to God, whether it's $5, $10, $15, $20, whatever it is. And this is why this is important, because Jesus says wherever you spend your money, wherever you invest your money, well, that's what's important to you. That's what matters most in your life. And what Jesus is asking us is for God to be first place in every aspect of our life. So you can start off right now by just saying, I'm going to give this one-time gift to God to begin the process of beginning the steps in order to be that sacrificial giver of God. What's interesting is that's what they were doing in Paul's time, is they were going to take a one-time gift, and they were going to give it to the church in Jerusalem. Here's the second thing. Once you decide to give a one-time gift, you recognize as being a follower of Jesus that we ought to regularly give. As income comes in, we should regularly give to God. There's a passage, again, in 1 Corinthians this time that talks about uh, on the first day of the week, maybe you knew this or not, they always got paid on the last day of the week. When the work week was complete, that's when they got paid. And Paul says, as a matter of priority, here's the last day, on the first day of the week, you should set aside a portion of the money you have earned and give it back to God. That's going from one time giving to God to regularly giving to God. And that's a step in the process. When I became a Christian a long time ago, I started out giving that first gift to God. And that was kind of a step from going here to give initially to becoming a regular giver. Me recognizing that God had priority in my life and that he needed to be a regular part of my life, and that God would bless whatever I was giving. The third step in this is determine or dedicate all of your finances. It's the principle of tithing. The tithe is 10%. That's what the actual word means. To dedicate your finances and committing to tithing. 
People will ask me, Pastor, is tithing a New Testament principle or an Old Testament principle? And if we're New Testament Christians, why do we have to go by the Old Testament principle of tithing? Well, believe it or not, tithing is also in the New Testament. And I can't see anywhere that Jesus removed the tithe. Matter of fact, I think just like Jesus did in a lot of different ways in our life, he upped the ante. Paul said that we ought to learn to be generous givers because of what the scripture says to me is the very basic minimum that we as followers ought to adhere to. 10%. A lot of people say, well, 10%, man. If I make a thousand dollars, that's like a hundred of it right away. And what you're saying to God is you trust him. You're trusting him to take that 900, go farther than the thousand would. And I could give you testimony after testimony after testimony of people who have learned to tithe and God blessed them over and over and over again. It's a hard commitment. I teach what I call the four month challenge. And I challenge them to give 10% back to God for four months and see if God doesn't live up to what he says he will do in the scripture. After four months that God is not taking care of you, giving you more than you need, you've not been able to get by, whatever that, I'll give you all four months back. It's like an interest-free loan. But that's how strongly, really, I believe in God that God will take care of you when you trust him with your finances. There's an Old Testament passage, and this is what God says. When you do that, when you honor him, he says, I'm going to open up the windows of heaven for you and pour out a blessing on you. And I've seen that happen in my life. And I could march people up here who have practiced this principle, and they would tell you exactly the same thing. And then God ends this whole passage with it, and he says this, try it. Put me to the test. See if it doesn't happen for you. Let's look at this last step that Paul talks about. Let's say, okay, so you've you've given something for the first time. Now you're giving regularly, which is good. You've dedicated your finances to God by bringing him the tithe. And the last one, it's learning to be a sacrificial giver. When we see a need, we help fulfill that need. Above what you're already given, we don't divert. We, above what we're already given, we bless other people. And Paul says that we ought to learn to be generous givers, that that's something that comes, you know, with practice. And when we can learn to be generous givers and when we are being generous givers, man, does your faith grow. And not only that, you feel good about what you're doing because you're helping someone else who has a need. So what about you today? Where are you at in being generous? Are you like in the very first stage where you can give something? Or are you already regularly giving? And look, I'm not asking you to send money to Real Life Church. Send your money to where you worship. I give it to the instrument of the local New Testament church in which I attend. And that's what I believe God has asked all of us to do. Maybe you're sitting there right now and you're saying, you know what, I can't do this. Then I want to be a church that helps you. Would you let us know? Would you email me, bob at reallifeyuma.com? I have financial counselors. I have people that can help you to uh, establish a budget. I have people that can help you get on the right track so that you'd be honoring to God in all of your decisions and all of your financial decisions. So if we can be of any assistance to you, please don't hesitate to email us and let us know. I want to close with this piece of scripture. There is a woman who is about to give an offering. And Jesus says that he is there watching, which is interesting, the collection box. It says that Jesus went over to the collection box in the temple and sat and watched the crowds drop in their money. Many rich people put in large amounts Then a poor widow came by and dropped in two pennies. He called his disciples and said, I assure you that this poor widow has given more than all the others have given. For they gave of the tiny part of their surplus. But she, poor as she is, 
She gave everything she had. Who understood the principle of being generous? The ones who gave a lot out of their surplus or the one who had nothing and gave everything? That's the essential quality of being generous. I hope it's challenged you today as it challenges me. Let me pray for you and then let me invite you back next week as we talk about the topic of self-discipline. Father, thanks for our time together. Thank you again for this message. Thank you, Father, um, again, that Paul talks about this subject. It's just not something that's made up, Father. It's right there in black and white. We've looked at the scripture verses. Lord, I pray it challenges us all. Father, help us to learn to be sacrificial givers. Help us to be able to get to that point in our life where we trust you. We trust you with our finances. God, you're a great big God. Help us to grow in that, and it is in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, God bless you guys, okay? And I'll see you back next time. If you were encouraged by today's talk, be sure to rate us and hit subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, and wherever you stream your podcasts. To experience other talks, videos, and live gatherings, visit us online at reallifeyuma.com or download the Real Life Church app. And again, thanks for listening to the Real Life Church Podcast.